Good morning, New Bethel. Good morning, New Bethel. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Is anybody glad to be in the house on this morning? Hallelujah. God has been good to us in spite of what's going on right now. We just come to lift up the name of Jesus because the Lord has been better to me than I've been to myself. So this is the day and we're going to rejoice. Oh uh -huh. 
Uh, the first uh, was the Great Chicago Fire of October 1871, uh, which ruined his finances uh, because before the fire had uh, be, be, before the fire he had been a wealthy businessman, and so the fire caused him uh, to lose a lot of his uh, financial, uh, yeah, his financial, uh, 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 yeah, his financial money, his his standing, his well-being. That's what I'm trying to say. And shortly after experiencing the first loss while crossing the Atlantic, all four of Spiker's daughters died in a collision with another ship. Spiker's wife, uh, Anna, survived and sent him uh, this news that uh, sent them the news of a famous telegram uh, that said, Saved alone. Uh, in other words, she was letting them know that she was the lone survivor. Uh, several weeks later, as Spiker's on a ship passed near the spot where his daughters died, uh, the Holy Spirit inspired these words, uh, and his words speaks to the eternal hope that all. When sorrows like a sea bellows roll, whatever my lot is, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. I wonder if there's somebody this morning that's looking at this broadcast, you can say it is well in spite of what's going on, in spite of COVID-19, it's still well. The reason why it's well, because your neighbor tell me it is well. Yes. It is well. And so I came this morning uh, with some yeah some people to help testify that it is well. It was Elisha and the Shudamite woman. Y'all remember yeah in 2 Kings chapter 14 verses 18 through 37. Uh, Elisha yeah the Shudamite woman finally has a son and the Bible tells about how yeah he a heat stroke and dies and the father tells the son to the mother and the mother lays him in the room yeah, of the man of God. And the Bible said when she came down and she asked for the servant, the man, her husband, began to talk to her and ask her, yeah, where are you going? It's not the season for you to be traveling. But instead of speaking her problem, she just said, oh, it's well. I just came this morning to tell somebody in spite you're dealing with, sometimes you gotta speak those things uh, that be not as though they were. Sometimes you gotta give God praise uh, in spite of your storm. You gotta say all is well. Yes, yes. In Philippians chapter 4, hmm. verse 11 through 13, Paul lets us know, he said in every state I've been in, I've learned to be content. Ask somebody this morning the reason why you don't have no peace in your home. The reason why you don't have no peace in your life uh, is because you don't understand. Uh, I can do all things through Christ uh, which strengthens me. When you find out uh, how the, uh, the power that you have, uh, not based off of you, but the case of, but based on who you're connected to, uh, then you'll understand no matter what I'm going through, uh, it is well because I can do all things through Christ. Which strengthens me. Yeah. Paul lets us know in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 9. He says, I will say that God told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. Yeah. Paul had a problem. And he kept praying about it. And the Lord said he came to the Lord three times and asked him to remove this thorn from his flesh. And I came this morning to tell somebody that no matter what you're going through, I know you've been praying about the situation that we're having to deal with, but can I tell you something? Until God moves on our behalf, I found out that his grace, his love is sufficient for me. The reason why I can have peace is because of his love for me. So Isaiah writes about this 
uh, wonderful promise that was given during the darkest periods of Israel's history. Uh, the reason why is the darkest period because you've got to understand that Israel is in exile in Babylon, which means they're going through something. They're on lockdown. They can't live life the way they normally live. Can I just put a pen right there and tell you, doesn't that sound like us today? We can't go and calm like we used to. We can't do all the things that we used to do. I'm having to preach to you now over the internet service because we can't meet together in the church the way we used to. But God is establishing a new normal because we're not going to be able to go back to the old church the way we used to. You ain't going to be able to give God the old praise that you used to. God is looking for something new today. He's looking for us to give him a different worship. He's looking for us to give him a different praise. That's why he said, I'm going to do a new thing in you. And today we're saying the new thing. Your old prayer ain't going to work. You're going to have to find out how to get ugly and cry out before the Lord. But what you used to do, it ain't going to work no more. Oh. So Romans 15 and 4, the New English translation says, and this is why I know this is a word for us today. Because Romans 15 and 4, the New English translation, it says, for everything that was written in the former times was written for our instruction. So that through endurance, uh, through encouragement of the scriptures, we may have hope. That's why we're preaching. That's why we're teaching. It's so that the people of God will still have hope. It's been found in the word of God. You got to get off TV. You got to get in your word and find the hope. The reason why you don't have no peace is because you are not looking for the one that gives peace. I wish I had a praying church this morning to help me preach this thing. And so it is Isaiah sends us, uh, sends us hope today during a time when we are surrounded by much gloom and depression. A time where we are constantly threatened by three great enemies and those enemies are doubt, fear, and worry. Uh, I don't care but I'm, I'm going to tell the story. I have a sister that I spoke to on the other day and, and she's been kind of dealing with this situation and, and she began to cry and said, brother, I'm scared but I had to tell her, baby, you got to have faith. Faith and common sense. That, that, that just because I wear my mask don't mean I ain't got faith. I just got enough common sense to listen to, yeah, the professor tell me what I need to do. But I still got faith. My faith tells me even if I catch it, the Lord will bring me out. He said this sickness is not unto death. And I just believe because I have an assignment by God. God will see me through. God will see me through. I discovered that your identity is discovered through adversity. I'm going to say that again. I discovered that your identity is discovered through adversity. And that simply means that when you're going through, you find out what people are really made of. I know I ain't going to get no help right there. You find out who your friends really are. You find out, Brother Lamingo, who really has your back when you're going through. You've been there for them when things were good, but now that things are bad, you can't, got, you can't find nobody to call on. Folk won't even give you an encouraging word. Folk won't even tell you, brother, if you need me, you can call me. I got a little piece of spare change that can help you and your family get through. You find out what folk are really made of when it really gets dark. Because I discovered this, this, this here this morning, because destiny is developed in dark places. I wish I had a witness this morning. Come in, Jeremiah, the Bible said, while you were in your mother's womb, God formed you and gave you your assignment. It's in the womb, it's in the dark places that you discover what your destiny is. God will make a way out of no way. What's in the desert? Jesus is tested. He's just been made a public service announcement that God said, this is my beloved son. The Bible says he sends him into the wilderness. Well, and while he's in the wilderness, that's when the test came. Can I tell you something this morning? That your test is coming 
because God has spoke your name. The same way he said about Job, this is my beloved servant who I'm well pleased of. That's why the attack is coming. Whenever God begins to bless you, whenever God puts his hand on you, whenever God has an anointing over your life, there's an attack going to come your way. But I came this morning to tell you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God will bring you out. God will not leave you while you're in your storm because he said he's an ever-present helper in the time of storm. Yes. It's in verse 1. The New English translation said at that time this song in the land of Judah. The song uh, that Isaiah is talking about is the song of the redeemed. Because you got to understand that Isaiah is prophesying about the future. He's prophesying about this new Jerusalem that will come. But can I tell you something? He's also prophesying about Jesus Christ. And we know that Jesus has already came and died for our sin. And so we are entitled. We ought to be able to sing a song today because we are the redeemed. That's why the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. We ought to have a song in our lips. We ought to have a song in our hearts. Because it does not matter what's going on. I know God is good all the time. In spite of dark time, God is good because God is a light in a dark hour. Yes. So he said, this song that they sing in the land of Judah, we have a strong city. He said, the Lord's deliverance. Get that, don't miss that. He said, the Lord's deliverance is like a wall or a rampart. A rampart is just a wall that was put around castle. It protect them and keep them. And so in other words, what he's saying is because we belong to God, we his redeemed because Jesus has redeemed us with his blood. That means that God's deliverance is a wall. Y'all may hear me this morning. That means that God is protecting us and he's keeping us. I wish I had somebody this morning to say the reason why I know about peace, the reason why I have peace even in my storm is because I know who has been keeping me. So, the Hebrew word, Yeshua, it means rescue. So, it's Yeshua that makes us safe. That, uh, really, uh, uh, makes us safe uh, in, in the Hebrew terminology is Yeshua. And, and I just came this morning to let you know that it's Yeshua. Yeshua is the Hebrew name that means Jesus. And so in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is it's Jesus who is going to be keeping us. It's Jesus that has been keeping us. It's Jesus that's keeping you right now. In fact, the text says he'll keep us in perfect peace if our mind is stayed on thee. It's Jesus that's been keeping you. It's Jesus in the morning. Jesus at noonday. Jesus at the midnight hour. Somebody ought to shout the more I call on the name Jesus. The better I feel. Yes. Hey, I've discovered uh, the picture of peace. Uh, I remember seeing there was a limb hanging out by a roaring, a roaring river. And as the water was forming and foaming because of all the reports and all of that, there's a limb that's hanging out in the midst of all the water. And on that limb, there's a nest ah, with a little baby bird sitting on the nest. That's a picture of what peace looks like. Sometimes all hell can be breaking out around you, but you can be at rest because you have peace in your life. Because God will give you peace. Yes, yes. Oh, well, well. my first point is. You have to experience peace to know what it is. Uh -huh. I'm going to say that again. You have to experience peace to know what it is. The, next, the dictionary defines peace as freedom from turbulence. Well, let me just say this here. I don't know nobody that has, uh, has been uh, turbulence free. Because the Bible tells us to take up our cross and follow him. Uh -huh. And so if I'm going to follow God, if I'm going to follow Jesus... If he's going to order my steps, there are going to be some problems. And so Webster's Dictionary don't do me any good. I wish I had a praying church. Because peace is not the absence of trouble, but the presence of God. That's why in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, the New Living Translation said, Don't worry about anything, but instead pray about everything. Tell God 
what you need. And thanks. Thank him for what he's already done. And verse 7 says, and then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Jesus Christ. In other words, whenever you spend some time with God, you can have some peace from God in your life. Hey, bless your name, God. Yes, yes. Isaiah lets us know. Uh, basically, here it is. The New, the, New, the New English Translation lets us know, uh, yeah, that, uh, oh Lord, you make us secure. In other words, uh, peace comes from being secure. And it's God that makes us secure. Isaiah 9 and 6 says Jesus came to bring us peace. The New Living Translation says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Counselor. Yes. Mighty God. Everlasting Father. Mm -hmm. And Prince of Peace. So God establishes peace on our behalf. I wish I had a praying church this morning. You missing it. God established peace for you because God is peace. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 32 and 17 says, that the fruits of righteousness will be peace. Whenever we are living rightly, God gives us peace. And if you don't have peace this morning, you need to check the way you're living. I wish I had some I just told you, we can't go back to being the church that we used to be. We've got to become this new church that God is looking for. Yes. Not everyone enjoys peace. Yes. How do you know, preacher? Because Isaiah 48 and 22 tells us, yeah, he says, there's no peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. Mm -hmm. Wicked people can't have peace. That's why they get on your last nerve is because uh, they want to upset your apple cart because their life is a living hell. Have you ever been around somebody whose life is all jacked up? And because their life is jacked up, they're trying to jack your life up. Mm -hmm. Hey, bless your name, God. I discovered that uh, there's no peace for the trouble disciple. Saw the, the troubled disciple in Luke 10 41 and 42. When he said, Martha, Martha, you're worried and troubled about many things. Mm -hmm. Verse 22 said, but one thing is needed and Mary has chosen the good part, which not be taken away from her. In other words, you've got to discover that no matter what you're going through, you've got to focus on the Lord. You've got to get in his word. You've got to stay on your knees. You've got to shut out uh, all of the noise from outside and concentrate on me. Well. John 14, 27, let's just know the New Living Translation. I am leaving you a gift of peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. And so it's in Psalms 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High yes. Yes. Uh, shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. Yes. Yes. And so uh, the first thing you have to experience peace to know what it is. The second thing is you have to know who gives peace. Uh -huh. And the last thing is why I have peace. And it's found in verse 3. It said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, yes. whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Mm -hmm. Peace is the Hebrew word that means shalom, which means reconciliation, because peace of God indicates God's blessing on man's obedience and faith. James 4 and 8 lets us know that if we draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh unto you. John 14 and 27, it says, Jesus gave us a promise that anyone, that anyone that obeyed my teaching, my father, will love them and we will come to them 
and make our home with them. I came to tell you today, if you live right, if you honor God with your life, he will come and live with you. That way you can have peace in spite of your strong. In Psalms 91 and 9, he said, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place and my refuge, the most high, verse 10 said, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I've got the promise that I don't have to worry about COVID-19. As long as I got King Jesus living with me, I'm covered by his blood. The blood, it still works. Somebody shout, it still has his power. I got a question this morning. Do you have peace? Do you have peace? He promised us that he'll keep us in present peace. If my mind is stayed on me, every morning I get up, I praise him for keeping me. Every afternoon, I tell him thank you. Every night, before I lay down on my bed, I tell the Lord, thank you for keeping me. Even though the storm is going on, that surpasses all understanding. I can't know, I don't know why I have this peace, but it's got to be because of Jesus. He died on an old rugged cross. They hung him high, stretched him wide. Somebody shout, he died. You guys give God time Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. God gave you a promise. He brought peace here for us. And why wouldn't he share his peace with you? The only reason why he wouldn't share it is because we haven't asked him. We haven't made him Lord and Lord over our life. I've discovered this. You can't pray and use Jesus' name when you haven't submitted to his name. You can't use his name in vain. And so today, I'll just ask someone that may see this. Today is a good day to reconnect. Because I really believe in my heart of heart that we are in the condition we're in not because of the president, but because of the church. We've got to be in place. And even though we have been in place physically, we've been out of place spiritually. But when we get back in place, 
if my people who are called by my name, yes. if we get back in the place that we're supposed to be spiritually, I believe God will heal our name. And so this morning, I'm asking you that we'll all just touch and agree this morning that we'll be more committed, we'll be more dedicated, we'll be more humble, we'll put God first. And I just believe God will heal our land. This first Sunday of April, we're fastly approaching his resurrection. And I just believe that if we all can touch and agree, I believe resurrection morning, something miraculous could happen. Yeah. The same power that got him up out of the tomb Hallelujah. is the same power that can heal our land. Yes. And I just believe today that if we can just touch and agree yes. and believe in faith, yes. God will do it. Yes. Because faith has its rewards. Because he said he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Yes. And so that's my prayer. If there anyone out there that may not know the Lord, Today's a good day to get to know him. Today's a good day to rededicate your life. Today's a good day to reconnect. Today is a good day to make the Lord Lord over your life. Today I ask if there's one that don't know him. Would you come and join not New Baptist Church but God's church. Wherever you are, open up your heart and receive him today. He said, if I'm standing knocking, whoever opens the door, I will come in and sup with them. The Lord we have, the Lord we serve is a great God. And he's worthy of all our praise. And so today, it is my prayer. Let me close with prayer. Father, we thank you today. We bless you for being God. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for keeping us. But we understand the day that you have kept us in perfect peace because we've been mindful of you. God, I just thank you this morning. And I bless you, God, that in spite of what's going on around us, Father, I've learned that the boat will not sink unless what's going on around them gets ended. And so today I pray, God, that as ships, we don't knock the water to sink our boat. But Lord, we'll understand who we have on board. The captain of the sea. Father, thank you for standing up and saying, peace be still. We thank you today, God. That anybody that's going through, Father, I pray right now that you'll give them strength. Allow them to feel your presence. Because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen.